SH heart failure affects hundreds and thousands of people every year. However, only a minority of those people can undergo a heart transplant. Heart transplants usually are done uh, in the range of 2000 or so in the United States every year. The alternative for heart transplants is a left ventricular assist device. It's also known as an LVAD or simply a heart pump. Heart pumps or the LVADs have undergone tremendous progress in the last three decades or so. Their size has shrunk significantly, their function and their, uh, their performance has become much more robust and reliable as they have progressed in terms of the technological advances being added. This has been a great news for all our end-stage heart failure patients because this really gives an option for those who need a device but can't wait for a heart transplant and those who cannot be heart transplant candidates and need the device to survive and stay healthy longer. Some of the earlier devices which were originally introduced in patient care about two decades ago one of that pump is, is shown here, which is also known as a Novacore pump. This pump was a beautiful engineering design, but as you can see, the size of this pump is so huge that it, it was restricted to only large size people. Uh, this device was mostly used as a bridge to transplant, and it took significant amount of efforts to actually discharge the patient with this device. Another device which was introduced in the clinical um, arena at the same time as the Novacore device was the HeartMet 1. The landmark rematch trial was conducted using this pump. As you can see, although the pump is very bulky and, and uh, was cumbersome, it did prove that there is a significant survival benefit when this pump is used in end-stage heart failure patient compared to optimal medical management. Actually, the benefit was as much as 50% survival benefit at two years of period. Both of these earlier LVAD devices were actually put inside the abdominal wall of the patients and actually worked uh, inside the patient's body. They were driven by uh, pneumatic and electrical power and were noisy and would make a noise every time they were compressing the blood sac to pump the blood out. Some of the other devices actually sit outside the body and they have been used in clinical, science, clinical medicine for the last uh, uh, three decades or so. One of that device is the thoracic p mat which actually sits outside the body and connects to each chamber of the heart, the left chamber and the right chamber. There are these two pumps which are sitting outside and are connected to a console. Most of these devices are used usually as a bridge to transplantation and their durability is in the range of months. The smaller pumps uh, which are now used uh, in our patients are usually powered by a small battery pack and this battery pack is usually used in a multiple of two so you can have two batteries which are connected to this pump and that's how the patient gets several hours of power just by using these two batteries. In this example you can see that the pump is connected by a plastic tube and you can see the, the white fluid being uh, pumped by this pump. This is the portion of the device that is the pump which is inside the patient. This white cord which is coming out actually exits the abdominal wall, what we also call as the tummy wall, and then connects to these two battery packs and the controller which is on the west band here. Other device modifications and other device technologies also included pumps which were used in patients just a few years ago uh, but are no more used and you can see an example here in my hand. Another example of a small pump uh, is, is this pump, also called as a HVAD or a hardware pump. This pump has recently uh, undergoing a FDA approval process uh, and this is a device uh, that has been used uh, clinically in patients uh, within a clinical trial for both bridge to transplantation and as a destination therapy. That means people who do not have transplant as an option, this device works very well. At Yale Cardiac Surgery, we are also offering an option to patients who are very unstable and have a catastrophic decline in their heart and lung function, which would not be candidates for an LVAD at the right go, but will need a support for uh, circulation as well as their lung support. And for that, we usually use an artificial lung in combination with the artificial heart. We also That is also known as an extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or an ECMO support. 
these types of patients they require a rapid deployment of this system so that they can be put on a, a support for their lungs and for their heart uh, rapidly within a matter of minutes. We usually accomplish that by putting one of these cannulas in the femoral artery and another cannula that is threaded from the vein into the heart. These two cannulas are subsequently connected to a pump that acts as a temporary artificial heart. As soon as you establish a rapid deployment and rapid uh, threading of the artery and the vein, you can drain the heart using the, uh, the vein cannula that has been threaded into the pump, pump that blood into the artificial lung that will oxygenate the blood and return that through the cannula that is threaded into the artery. And this way, is the heart and the lung both can be bypassed by using the artificial heart and artificial lung support within a matter of minutes. This type of ECMO support or the artificial heart lung support can save countless lives because it gives you the, the necessary time to figure out what may have led to the patient's heart suddenly stopping or his lung from deteriorating to a condition where he cannot oxygenate enough. The same type of support can also be used as an artificial lung for patients who are not able to oxygenate their blood adequately. Artificial lung support has also revolutionized the way we manage patients with end-stage lung disease. Patients who have ARDS, patients who have acute embolism to their lungs, and patients who have got uh, interstitial pulmonary fibrosis, or any type of end-stage lung disease who need a support with their artificial lung till they can be either transplanted or their lung function can recover, can be supported using an artificial lung support. At Yale Cardiac Surgery, we not only offer conventional cardiac surgery such as coronary artery bypass surgery, mitral valve surgery or aortic valve surgery or minimally invasive cardiac surgery, but we also offer LVAD backup surgery or artificial heart pump backed up surgery. In these cases, usually the heart function is so poor that just by doing a conventional surgery is not going to be alone lead to success because Within the post-operative period, the patient may require more support and these are the cases where a conventional surgery is usually planned with a backup of artificial heart pump so that the patient has a full chance of recovery.